Hello guys, Nigel here with you again, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and here we are on this dark and gloomy Monday morning. It's actually the, what is it today? It's the 9th, the 9th of January 2023 already, so, uh, and this is a review of a kit I've been waiting for for a long time. Um, heard about it many, many months ago uh, and couldn't wait for it to come along. I pre-ordered it from a shop, uh, they seem to be the last shop that got them in stock. Then I never got one, and they told me I didn't have it on pre-order. So I was like, oh, great. So I looked on Amazon, and they were really expensive, and found one on found this one on eBay, and got it from a, a shop called Mainly Military. And I put the order on a Tuesday, and they still hadn't sent it out by the following Friday. It was like, come on! I want this bloody kit! So here we go. Finally, here we are, Monday morning, I've got my hands on one. I should have just ordered it from Jadlam, and just got it from there. So what like like plastic monkey did and he got his and it was um it was uh it was on his doorstep in no time. Well he got it for Christmas actually for a Christmas present. So finally we've got the kit. If you want to see a build of this kit, go over to Plastic Monkey, that's the name of the channel, and he's doing a build of it. I think he's just put out part five this weekend and uh, he's just got the fuselage all buttoned up and everything. So he's a he's a model machine, he'll have it together in no time. I was gonna try and catch him up, but I've got no chance now. So um anyway. Here we go, this is the kit, the kit number is 04968 and it's a Hawker Hurricane Mark IIb in 132nd scale from Revell. It's a level 5, 118 parts as you can see, 30.5cm uh, long and a 38cm wingspan. Love the Hurricane, most people love the Spitfire, I love the Spitfire, but I prefer the Hurricane. I think it's a, uh, I just think it's a better looking plane. It's like a big tank, isn't it? So, uh, and I love the, the Typhoon as well. It's the same, it's a great big tank, isn't it? So looking around the box on the side there, we've got the image as we have on the front, on the end. We've got the same sort of thing. Typical Revell, horrible box. Very soft cardboard, easily crushable, and end opening as well. When they learn. On the back here, we've got some images. We've got the sprues over here. You've got some, telling you, it's about complex kit and it's not suitable for children under 13 and then here this is something I love that the Revell do they put pictures of the actual model rather than CAD images because you can imagine you know a CAD images of that of that cockpit is going to look brilliant all sharp and crisp and everything whereas this will show you ejector pin marks soft molding whatever and as you can see when you look close up it does all look quite soft doesn't it so uh, but I mean it's a 40 pound model for 40 quid it's a bargain um, if Tamiya made it, it would be a lot better, but it would be three times the price. So, pays your money, takes your choice, don't you? And at the moment, this is by far the best, probably the best Hurricane kit on the market in any scale. But it's certainly the best in 30 second. You've got the Fly one, which is uh, apparently not very good. And there's the Pacific Coast one as well, isn't there? So, end opening box, as I said, total and utter garbage. I don't know why the Val keep doing it. So we've got a lovely colour instruction book. We've got sprues in here wrapped up in bags. People moan about having sprues together, but don't have an issue as long as they're like you know, sort of nice and tightly wrapped up and everything. They don't all like that one there, you see that can move around and that can cause damage. So you may have some damaged parts in there. We've got our fuselage and wings all taped in together. So that should be fine as long as it has all moved and scratched everything. But uh, we shall see in a minute. Clear parts, very, very nice indeed. I've got some masks on the way for this from um, from Art Scale. Um, apparently, watching Monkeys build the canopy is going to be very, very difficult to mask because there's no ribbing on there. And somehow he seems to think they've got the the moulding in the plastic, but I don't think they can do that. But I think they've probably got it on the inside or something. It was just very, very soft. So let's first of all look at the instructions. In here we'll have a nice decal sheet. So there's the decal sheet. It'll be a very, very quick review because. Loads of people have done this, but I know some people wait to see my reviews for some unknown reason. So here we are, our glossy pages, I expect. So we've got the paint callouts here, typical Revell paint callouts that are asking us to mix and everything. I wish they'd give us other companies as well, but uh, with RAF aircraft, you know, you've got your blacks, your silvers, your greys, you've got your earth, you've got your sky, and you've got your dark green, you know. In cockpit interior we should be laughing I think this is the um, colour for the cockpit interior so you're mixing yellow matte green and grey so what you want to do is basically make up something like XF71 I like to make my own which is slightly lighter as you can see there so uh, there we go if you want to see about my greens go look at my Lancaster builds or my Spitfire build and I talk about them on there more colour call outs here so we've got our 
our sprue call outs here, all with some parts not, not used. So obviously we're going to have some different versions coming along. And then we're carrying on there again. Again, we've got parts not used. So starting off here, cockpit seat going together, adding an armour plate. We've got some holes to drill, assembling the armour plate, building up the, um, the floor, uh, painting up the sides and everything, the, uh, the sides of the um, cockpit framing. Some talk about this. I believe this would have been painted aluminium, but the inside skins of the aircraft would have been interior green. So that's how I'm going to do mine. Um, and then we're adding bits and pieces. Having watched Paul's build, it looks like there's a bit of a sort of it could have been planned out better um you know when you when you look at how paul's put this together he's followed the instructions and it looks like a nightmare getting some of the stuff in so that i may do some changes to the build sequence we shall see but going in you can see all the clock bit framing going together here we've got this heater duct there and then we're going to paint our instrument panel add our decals and then fit the instrument panel we've got the gun sights there you've got the the later t Ugh, what's that on there so somebody's been having their dinner while they made these instructions. Um, it's got the later square type gun sight there. We've got the round type there. I'll be going for the round type because it's an early aircraft. We've got basically a dummy engine. You don't have any engine detail. Fit in the interior and the cockpit into the fuselage halves all going together. Note is saying don't actually cement the fuselage, the cockpit into the fuselage. Painting that side interior green. And then we've got this temporary clear um, closed canopy to add on. They're telling you not to glue it on. I'm guessing it just clips on. And then you've got the the bonnet or the hood as it were going on there and then we're going to start on the wheelbase uh, build up the wheelbase which is going to form the wing box you're going to build up this box here build up this box as you can see it's all going together putting the landing light into the wing and then putting the other la landing light into the other wing and then assembling the lower wings onto the box and then putting the upper wing down on trying to open a hole if the gun camera is used so you've got to do some research on there and then we're adding the upper wing over there. So we're actually building up a complete wing section. I believe they've done this because they plan to make a Mark 1, which of course had fabric wings. So I think that's what they've done here, rather than give us a one-piece wing. Um, I would much have preferred a one-piece lower wing. It would have been a lot more rigid, but we have to see how this goes together. Looking at Monkey's build, it looks like it's going together very, very well indeed. I've still got this more of this dinner on here. <laughs> I don't know what it is. If it's got damp, I just hope my decals are okay. Um, so here we go, we've got the, the panel going in there, and then we've got the gun panels going in here, cover for the landing light. And then more of the same going on that side, and then we're going to drop the fuselage onto the wing. Hopefully that'll be a nice fit. We've got the rear section of the fuselage going in there. We've got the um, identification light in the bottom there. And then we've got some more dinner over here, as you can see. We've got these brown splodges everywhere. I don't know what it is. <laughs> If the back of the box was sealed, it's certainly, I don't know if somebody's had a look through there whether they're having a dinner or what, I don't know. But um, telling us to take a bit of uh, the fairing off there, assembling the duct, and then we've got the radiator there. Building up the radiator, going into there. Sneeze time there. Building up the radiator, and then we're going to add the, uh, the scoop onto the back. And then we've got the option of having the flap down or the flap open. So, uh, sorry, closed or open. Um, I generally put mine closed. And then we're going to build up the rudder. Nice to see we've got some locations on there, which is more than can be said for the Airfix Spitfire. That's a real letdown on the 124 Spitfire. You've got a rudder and the fuselage. There's no connections whatsoever. And then we've got the tailplanes going together and the elevators going in. Again, we've got some connection points in there. It looks like they have to be glued in. They're not going to be positionable. You can position them and then glue them, but they won't, you won't be able to play with them. And then we've got uh, only with E60, whatever E60 is. Uh, E58 and E60, I'm not sure what the difference is, we'll have to look into that. And we've got the tail wheel going in here, we've got the tail wheel, main, main wheels being built up, building up the landing gear, adding the doors, putting the landing gear in. Uh, it looks like they're not in the instructions, they're not giving us an option of having the undercarriage up. So whether the doors fit or not, I don't know. Something we'll have to look into. Building up the ailerons, fitting the ailerons, fitting the flaps, you can have those up or down. And then you've got your exhaust going together there, which is nice. Why did Nervix do that with the 124 Spitfire? I do not know. Um, so you've got a choice there of exhaust going in. So you've got the little tiny round outlets, or you've got the, the sort of semicircular outlets. So do some research, see which one you want. You've got a pitot tube and some little bits and pieces and steps going in there. So you've got an option of having the step up or down. Not sure. So I'll have to look into it. I'm not sure if that step actually comes down or if when he puts his when the pilot puts his foot in it it comes down 
and then as soon as he takes his foot off it springs back up I'm not sure so be careful with that because if that's the case then that would only be if you've got it with a, with a pilot's foot on it I've got a feeling that is going to come down with the weight of his foot on there um, so remove the temporary canopy and then you can fit So that's J8. So the the temporary canopy is J8. So be careful if you're going to have it with it closed. Don't think a temporary canopy can can be sprayed, butchered, or whatever because you're going to need it if you want to do it closed. And then we've got here the canopy open with it slid open. I guess you could always put that on and close it up, but that saves you having the gap. And then we've got the rear view mirror going here. Remember these guys took these mirrors off of cars and stuff, so you could have either a flat one or a round one. Propeller going in. Adding the antenna onto the back, a bit of easy line on there, make it look good. And that's it. And then we're on to um, the colour schemes here. So we've got uh, RAF Fairwood Common South Wales, July 41. This is uh, 79 Squadron. Um, or 79 Squadron, should I say. And then we've got so that's a nice um, dark earth and, uh, and green camouflage system there with the sky underside. So that's looking lovely. Looks like we've got plenty of stencil data and everything on our decals. And then going over the page here, we've got the Night Fighter version, which is lovely. Um, may be tempted to do that and use these paints. These were sent to me by Dave Coley. And these are the new Arcus paints. They're actually enamels, but apparently they thin beautifully with um, leveling thinners. And in here, we've got the, we've got the interior grey-green. We've got the night colour, which is the external colour. And then we've got the colour for all the um, camouflage as well. And then we've got flame uh, exhaust manifold colour there. So I may actually use them on this. It'll look quite good. And we we'll do it in the night. Who knows? We shall see. Not sure what colour the interior of the wheel bay would be if we did this one. So covering it like it came from the box, didn't it? So there we are. So that's the instructions. So they're very nice indeed. As I say, if you want to see this being built, go and look at Plastic Monkey's channel. Go and give them a subscribe and a like. Decals here, they are cartograph. We can see we've got a C on there. So they're definitely cartograph. They are beautiful. As you can see, they're flat, they're thin, they're perfectly in register. They have hardly any carrier film on them. They are gorgeous. And uh, here we might have an opportunity to use some of those beautiful one man army stencils. We shall see. That's uh, very, very nice indeed. You can see the panel there. Beautifully done. Very, very nice. Really nice decal sheet there. So for a £40 kit, absolute bargain. Okay, so let's have a look at this plastic then. So we've got the clear parts here. Let's have a look. Because we've got these lovely sellotape bags, we can get it all out and put it all away again safely. Um, which is better than the bloody Tammy with their staples. Urgh. Did that F35 the other day and so annoying those staple bags are horrible. Right, very, very, very nice indeed. Beautiful clear parts. Now, let's see what Monkey's on about. So I can feel nothing on the outside. And I can feel nothing on the inside. It must be. Oh, there, there is a ridge there. There is a ridge there on the outside. Okay, so because they can't possibly mould it in the plastic, um, which is when, when Paul was saying, you know, they've got to mould it, I, 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 you can't do that. Um, you know, you can get spider webbing, but you won't get that because it's all got single single points. You can see there's a spider web on that one, where you've got the plastic coming in there, coming in there, and then it meets here, and you can see there's a, there's like a line in it. But that doesn't matter because the only bit you want of this clear, I believe... It's going to be those two panels there, so they're going to paint the rest. But um, very, very nice, those clear parts. They are gorgeous. Let's just grab this. You can see no distortion. Really, really lovely. Very, very nice. What I'm without, beautiful clear parts. So maybe get in touch with Border Model and do their clear parts for me. Did I say that? No. So we'll put those away, keep them nice and safe, not get them scratched. So there we are, lovely. Well done, Ravel. Beautiful job. Right, let's have a look in here. So we've got a bag of parts here. As I say, I'm not going to 
dwell too long on any of this because there's already been reviews done. I haven't looked at the only review I've looked at is Paul's. And Paul's review was about 10 minutes. So, very nicely done panelling. Very, very subtle, really nice panel line. You can see there the panel lines on there are gorgeous. And the actual Zeus fasteners, at last, they've got it right. The Revell one, the uh, Revell, the Revell Spitfire has got like bloody donuts on there. They're huge. The Airfix Spitfire has got sort of raised lumps and I've sanded them back, which you'll see in one of the videos coming up. Um, but these are gorgeous. Very nicely done indeed. And the fabric on there is lovely. You've got some ejector pin marks on the inside down here, but I don't think they're going to be seen. Looking at Paul's build, you can't hardly see anything inside. So... Uh, don't make too much fuss about the interior. I've got some photo etched belts I think I'll use in this. But um, I might even have some HGW ones actually. We've got some wings here. So we've got an upper and lower there. You can see we've got the ejector chutes. They're blanked off. So you might want to cut those open. Um, I'm a shoot. We'll have no gun detail in there because everything's all closed up. Which is fine by me because that means you haven't got the problem of ill-fitting panels. And uh, very, very nicely done. Nice thin... Nice thin trailing edge on there. And uh, yeah, lovely. Really, really nice. Again, we've got raised rivet detail there, which is gorgeous. I don't ever see Ravel do raised rivet detail on a modern kit. We've got raised rivet detail on that panel there, and all, everything else is recessed. The Zeus fasteners again on the wing are gorgeous. You've got raised rivet detail on the wing there on the end. So uh, another pair there. And then another fuselage half there. So all in all, really, really nice. Got raised rivet detail on the back. Oh, it's going to look gorgeous part next to that Lancaster. Oh yeah, really like this. I want to start this straight away. It's really, really nice. So, here we have a couple of sprues in the bag together. Hopefully nothing's damaged. So we've got part of our wing wing box there, the intake spinner. This is all just shouting there's going to be another version coming because this is all stuff that's not going to be on a Mark 1, for example. So, um, lovely. And then we've got our gear doors there, propeller in one piece, which is a nice touch. We've got the intake there, which is in two halves, we'll have a seam to deal with. Wheels look very nice. Um, they've got a little slot there for a um for a valve but there's no valve molded on there landing lights there that's part of the air intake is it there We've got undercarriage legs there which look perfectly strong enough for a small kit like this a little bit of mold seamage going on but no real flash to talk of but there are there is seams to clean up just like on the border model length you'll have your work cut out cutting doing seams and i did notice we've got some ejector pin marks on the inside here on the doors but uh Nothing much to bother about. But the landing lights there, which look lovely. They look great with some chrome paint on them. And then stick a lens over them. Very nice indeed. And then the final bag of bits. The biggest one. I do like the way Ravel do this with these bags. Sellotape them. It's, uh, it's good. If Ravel would just do give us decent boxes, they'd be up there with the best of them on their packaging. But they refuse. Right, so here we have... That's the underbelly there, the centre of the wing box. The uh, back part of the fuselage there, we've got the flaps with no ejector pin marks in them, which is a nice touch. On either side, we've got ejector pin marks. That's the actual flaps, that's the wing innards, isn't it? Or is that flaps up and that's flaps down, I'm not sure. The wing box there, we've got some beautiful detail there with the wing bay. We've got some raised rivet detail and everything on there that you can see. Really, really nicely done. Ailerons. Lovely fabric detail on the rudder there, tail planes as well. The tail wheel there in two halves, a flash on the sprue there. But, uh, mm. What a bargain, 40 quid for this, bargain. And then we've got a different exhaust there, you can see you've got the semi-circular outlets there, and you've got the little round outlets there. So there's the difference you can see in those. Our elevators there, and then here we've got all our cockpit parts. You can see we've got little ejector tabs on there to be removed. That's no issue. Is that a short shot? Or is it supposed to be like that? 
looks like it's supposed to be like that. But you can see the, the very, very fine detailing, all these little tubular parts. And then again, coming over here, all the little fine detailing. So give them a good clean up, round the seams up and everything. Get them all nice and it'll look gorgeous. But as I say, go look at Paul's build. You'll, you, you can't see much in there. Um, and there's two different fronts of the, uh, for the nose there. I'm not sure which one's which. The back of the seat there, which is lovely. A raised detail on there. I'm not sure if you're going to catch that. There's some beautiful raised rivet detail on the back of that seat that you're never going to see. Instrument panel looks quite nice. You've got the side panel there for the cockpit. But uh, yeah, part of the floor there, or there's, there is no floor. It's the tubular structure that goes under his feet. But um, it's gorgeous. Great big ejector pin mark in the middle of there, look, which is a shame. That's going to need taking care of unless something goes over it. And we've got one there as well, which is going to have to be taken care of. But um, looking at Paul's build, I keep saying Paul's build because it's the only one I've seen. These these ends here, you can see like where these interlock together. It's all very, very soft and round and bleh. it's not very crisp at all. But um, his has gone together beautifully, so see no reason why, um, why mine won't. Yeah, very, very nice indeed. So there we are. That has been a review of the Revell Hawker Hurricane Mark IIb in 132nd scale. And it is looking at it on first, you know, you can't tell until you've put it together. But actual looking at the detail on the parts and everything and the instructions and the, the way the whole thing is put together, it looks gorgeous. Absolute bargain. So uh, I cannot wait to get started on it. As I say, I was going to try and catch Paul up and build with him, but um, there's no way I can do it. I don't know how he does it. He's, he's just a machine, how he turns these kits out. But, um, anyway, so thank you for watching this. As I say, go over and look at his channel. You'll see his build going on. It's lovely. And, um, and you'll see a build of me doing this very soon as well. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.